the one and only Linnea Quigley. covered all the bases. So Linnea, we're really happy to have you here tonight. Um, I wonder if I could just ask you a couple questions and we'll open it up to the audience. Um, you said that Return of the Living Dead is your favorite movie that you were in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think it's probably the movie that gets you noticed in a big way for obvious reasons. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think you made a lot of people happy when that movie came out. A lot of young boys very happy. I heard you were uh, yeah, I was, very, <laughs> I was very confused by that movie. We'll get to that. Um, so I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how you came to be involved in that film and how it affected your career. Well, I had done, uh, this casting director had called me in for a movie, Silent Night, Deadly Night, which the, they have the Santa Claus killer. And um, I worked on that and I was in Mexico and I heard there was a big commotion about it because of some scene on TV with Santa. And then I came back and uh, Return of the Living Dead had already cast somebody as me six months ago, but the girl became pregnant. So they were recasting. <laughs> I was like, oh, good. <laughs> you know, and I had to go in and read, and then, then I had to go in for Dan O'Bannon to read, and um, the casting director and the co-producer and the producer and do that scene of, you know, in front of their, um, about my fantasies. Mm. Can't talk about that now. But uh, anyway, I uh, got the role and I was very, very happy. So were we. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Um, now this, I think, was one of maybe the first punk rock zombie movies, if not the only one, I don't know. But it was certainly one of the first. Now you were also involved with The Skirts, the L.A. punk band. And you were kind of in the music scene in L.A. when you were filming this movie. Um, how did that influence your work in the film? I mean, did you come up with the character, or was that already written like that? Well, um, I brought my own things to it. But then Dan also was exact on certain things. Not on what I said, but like just the placing of the toadstools and the, where exactly I was. But I just kind of took that character and, you know, because watching all the people come in and out of the mask where we used to rehearse, I saw a lot of cool things and people and kind of took from them too. So, were you friends with Jewel Shepard because she kind of went on to become a big screen queen also? I knew Jewel. I'd known her, but not like friends. Like, just like, um, we would do like ads for, for movies. They used to do an ad with the girls that aren't in the movies and then sell the movie on the basis of that. And then, uh, you know, the people weren't in the movie. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to get all uh, James Lipton on you, the actor studio, <laughs> if you don't mind, just for a moment. Okay. Okay, so no, no, um, Lene and I kind of talked about this last night at dinner, and she said it was okay to ask about this, because i have been confused about this for many years. Um, when I first saw Return of the Living Dead, I was a young man, and I snuck into the film, I was not of age, and my friends and I saw the film, and we noticed something very peculiar about your body <laughs> in the film. And I, there was a lot of discussion after the film whether that's how women really looked. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what was going on with that body that you had in the film. Oh, okay. Uh, well... I, I think some people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It is called the Barbie doll piece, where um, it was really, like, uh, the first makeup man, um, Bill Muntz, didn't really know what he was doing, but they, it's like they, they like, 
like poured um, alginate down my pants <laughs> and made a mold. And then it became like a kind of a G-stringy thing that they put here and then right here. And so every time I'd have to go to the restroom, I'd be like, and glue me, you know. And, you know it was, um, it, it made it very weird to be like that. It was, and very confusing. Yes. To yeah, young, I can young see people. Um, the, that's, yeah. that woman and correct? <laughs> so what was the point of that? Why did they have you wear a Barbie doll crotch? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think Dan wanted me to be like, uh, just not really a woman or man, just a being of some sort <laughs> that loved death and wasn't correct in some ways. Well, I think you succeeded quite well. <laughs> well I know there's okay. a lot of Brazilian wax and things going on there. I also heard him say in an interview that had he known that women would have liked the film, he would have had your boyfriend in the film be nude as well. Is that? I didn't know that one. Yeah, it's on the DVD. You, your, you, your friend's you, suicide. You, yeah. You, yeah. He thought only men would watch the movie, but I think he was mistaken a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, Mark. He was, he was great too. He was like a nice person too. Do you, do you find that you have a lot of female fans or is it primarily men? It's both, believe it or not. I was surprised, but it's both. Um, I've seen people that had like the hair exactly like I had mine and things like that sometimes. And I'd be, oh my God, is that, you know, it looked like it, so. People said they grew up on that movie and thought it was cool. It's very cool. It's very cool movie. And the early. music in it is like yeah, the music is great. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's a great soundtrack to own if you don't own that. It was tense. Really? Oh, very tense. Yeah. Very tense. So, were you scared on set? I mean, was the set creepy? Uh, the the set wasn't as creepy as like. I got like strep throat from being in the water and buried and you know rained on and it's like I started getting those horrible phone calls where they say I'm gonna call you three times and a third time you'll be dead and I like I called the set and you know they got worried and and I went out and bought an M1. <laughs> <laughs> But the next like morning, I like I'm like wake up at three for some reason, and and my back then it would be a VHS machine, yeah, you know, and it was blinking. The lights all were out in the house, and I thought, okay, the guys cut the the electricity, and I'm going to die now. So it was like because I always worked the nights, and I had a couple nights off. So that part was scary. So that, so there was no resolution to that. This person just disappeared. He just, after a while, he'd call and say, oh, wow, weird things. <laughs> okay. You probably get a lot of that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so as I alluded to when I was uh, introducing you before um, the film, I think one of the things that make you so great as a screen queen is that you have a great sense of humor, it seems like, about the whole exploitation thing. And um, have you felt that that's helped you get roles that you're willing, you know, to kind of laugh at what you're doing? Probably, because I have seen a lot of actresses. In fact, um, another film I got by a girl not wanting to be topless was this film called Graduation Day, which was before Return. And it's like at the last minute she said, oh, I'm not going to do a topless scene. And... Um, I just, in my family, it wasn't a huge deal. My dad was a doctor and everything, nudity and that. And um, it wasn't like lewd, it was fun. 